There are two essential game skills that every single male adult needs to have. Number one, being able to pretend that Grey's Anatomy is watchable. And number two, being able to recognize a minor when you see one and acting accordingly and responsibly. So today we're gonna kind of look around, find some minor intervals on the fretboard and turn it into a pretty dope, chill musical exercise that's gonna sound like this. So basically, what are we talking about with this minor thing? So any single note in a scale has a chord that goes with it. And as we've talked about in previous videos, the two, three, and six become minor chords. And the thing that distinguishes a minor chord from a major chord is its third, okay? So let's like just take this A right here. If we take the A major scale, we'd go A, B, C sharp, right? So a, a major third would be right here. Or you could actually, instead of going four frets higher, you could go, down a string and one back. A minor would be a flat third. So that interval right there, that space from five to eight, from A to a C is a minor third. And minor thirds sound really cool, especially in the context of a lot of different genres, rock being one genre that uses minor thirds a lot. So uh, again, like we said before, the two, three, and six in any key become minor chords, therefore they have this quality of having a minor third. So we're gonna use everybody's favorite key, the key C, to talk about where they exist and how we can turn it into this musical exercise. So in the key of C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, the two, three, and six would be, the two would be D, the three would be E, and the six would be A. So we kind of want to find spots where we can get a D, an E, and an A, and kind of link them together using their minor thirds. And the way we're going to do that starting off is by doing something like this. Kind of sounds pretty cool just going through these minor thirds. So the first one we're gonna do is uh, the D note, which is the fifth fret on the A string, okay? So if we slide into it, I'm just sliding from three to five on the A string. That's giving me the D note. It's minor third is an F. Now we could play it here, this F right here, the eighth fret on the A string. I'm gonna go back to the D string third fret to get an F. You don't even have to remember that the minor third of a D is an F, it can be helpful, but we're just making it a shape, a move, like this. Now we're gonna move it down to the seventh fret on the D string. So we went from the D to its minor third. Now we're gonna use the same finger to go from five to seven, which this note right here is an A, the sixth chord in the key of C, and its minor third is the same deal. In fact, a lot of times you just go down a string, back two frets, That'll give you the minor third for pretty much any note uh, on the fretboard. So we've got a D, its minor third, the two chord, into the sixth chord, the A and its minor third, and then you can kind of do the same move, starting on the seventh fret of the G string, slide that two frets, and then to compensate for the B string, we're just gonna go down a string back one fret. Then that's gonna give us uh, the E, which is the three chord. So basically, we can think of it as two chord, six chord, three chord, and this will work in any key. You just find out where the two is, so like in the key of C, we start with the D. Kind of put them together like that. You can even kind of play them together as kind of like two note chords. And they're always gonna connect, just depending on what key we're in, so it's totally movable. If we want to do something in the key of D, the second note in the key of D is this E, we just do an E. And we're kind of stacking, linking these minor thirds or minor chords together in a way that kind of sounds like a, like a little bit of a lead thing, okay? Now, the root note of each of those notes, remember the two, three, and six in the key C, is a D, an E, and an A. Now, if we just take those individual root notes that we've slid into and added the minor third to, we'd have a D, an A, and an E. Cool thing about that is we can combine those three notes and make our own little chord out of it. And this actually will end up giving us a suspended chord, okay? I'll link you to a video on just suspended chords if you wanna learn more about those because they sound really cool, uh, especially when you kind of mix them with some of these lead things. So we're gonna start off the whole exercise by taking this D suspended chord, which I have the fifth fret on the A string, I'm reaching to make power chord to grab the seventh fret on the D string, and then I'm reaching again, kind of like a super reach here, really great for your hands to kind of stretch those out to get the ninth fret of the G string. So I'm gonna start kind of playing it like, then add the minor thirds in. 
And then I'm gonna go to the C note, which again, this is in the key of C we're thinking of. So uh, I'm gonna use the same shape, a suspended chord. The great thing about suspended chords, as you're gonna learn when you visit that video I'm gonna link you to, is that they're neither major nor minor. So I can use the same chord on a D and a C, and it'll sound good in that key, right? There's a C. And now we're gonna add a different uh, kind of connection of these uh, same chords, but we're gonna start here. Okay, so I'm sliding from the three to five on the low E string to get an, a lower A. So here's my sixth chord, doing the same minor third move here from an A to its minor third. That's gonna line me up again with that where we started from a D, but going to an E here. And then I'm gonna come back to the D, fifth fret A string, and play the minor third on the same string. Okay, so again, really slow. Five E minor third, seven A minor third, up a string to the D, same string minor third. So C's part here. Okay, so we kind of have two distinct parts that are kind of playing back and forth off each other as just an exercise to kind of learn how these connect together, maybe build up some of the speed. So here's the whole thing again, D suspended. C. You can add a lot of different things into it, like uh, the A minor scale is something we've talked about, the relative minor. You can maybe add like, even like pentatonic uh, kind of phrases or licks to that. Maybe like the D to the C. Just kind of like start doing different things. And I think that's the best way to kind of start incorporating, practicing these intervals into more of a musical context where you kind of have the tonal center of maybe this D suspended chord, and then space to practice something, whether it's a scale, whether it's this like minor third linking thing, and then that kind of sets the timeline for what you have to do to get back to the next chord. And then maybe you can even do like a major. That's the beauty of arpeggios and linking these intervals together. So I think it's a really good exercise to start seeing how these chords relate to each other within the context of moving through the fretboard and being able to use these repeatable patterns in pretty much any different way in any single key. So hopefully you learned a little bit about how to spot these minor intervals. And if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments on Instagram, Twitter, the website, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot.